and welcome to Dabbling in Journals. Today I thought I would do a tarot journaling session and share that in case anybody's interested. I use tarot cards for self-reflection. I like to pick a card each week that I'm going to focus. It'll help me, prompt me to think of something that I, that I can focus on for the week. I also use them for self-care, self-healing and I also like using tarot cards to prompt art journaling ideas. So I just find them, you can get so many different decks and the, so much beautiful artwork, I really find them inspiring. Now when I'm going to do this, I do like to take the opportunity as well to have a sort of grounding time for myself. So I have some candles lit because I love candles. I've got some flowers. These are dried ones that I've taken from bouquets of flowers that were gifted to me. This little pink one came from my niece. <laughs> if I had fresh flowers, I would use those. I do like to light some incense because I like the smell and I find that really relaxing. I've got my little crystals. My children bought me these. They chose one each. That makes sure that I'm thinking about them. And I sometimes have some relaxing music playing. I've got my feet firmly planted on the floor and I will take some really deep breaths to get myself as calm and relaxed as I possibly can. Then I will take my deck of cards and today I am using a deck called The Shimmering Veil Tarot by Scylla Conway. I really love her artwork. I think this was the first tarot deck I ever bought. This was what drew me in. They're very thick cards, these. <laughs> They've got this beautiful silver gilding on the edges. I don't know if you can see that reflecting. Now, because they're so thick, they're a bit tricky to shuffle. But I'll give it a go to shuffle my card, make sure I get a random card <laughs> and I could also overhand shuffle but I'm a bit clumsy and sometimes I drop them and I don't want them to land on a candle and set fire to myself because that wouldn't be very calming at all would it? <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is just randomly select a card. Am I ready? Yes, you fed up watching me shuffling. Let's see what card I get. And I have this one. Wow, that's really interesting. Okay, so let's have a look at this card. I'll just move my crystals back a bit and I'll try and zoom in for you. The circle here represents earth. So when I'm looking at the meaning in the book, I know I'm looking for earth and I'm looking for the number one. So I'll be able to find the kind of suggested interpretations in the book but I do like to look at them myself first. Now obviously we've got a sky here. Scylla Conway paints mainly in oil so these this is obviously a copy of an oil painting that she's done. I mean those clouds are beautiful so straight away that's made me think I want to practice painting clouds this week. Then at the bottom we've clearly got earth. Now what could this be? It's very abstract. It reminds me of an embryo I had um, in vitro, what do they call it, in vitro fertilization, IVF for my last child because I had blocked tubes and so when I had the IVF they show you the embryos before you, before they put them in you, <laughs> so you, they make them, <laughs> they don't make them, they make them out of your eggs and so on, but then they show you the embryo and I actually watched my embryos dividing on the screen before that they were you know, put back into my uterus. Sorry, this is too much information. But that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of an embryo or a cell. Because you've got this like outer lining and then all these little sort of circles. Although this is a bit of a wobbly one because they're not all the same size, are they? So I wonder what her idea and intention was behind this painting because it's so abstract. I love the colours, all the purples and pinks. This looks really earthy to me. I've just noticed that's a snake. Okay, so this on the outside is actually, can you see? It's got an eye and teeth and it looks like it's holding its tail. Then there's a name for that, a snake holding its tail. And can I remember? Is it Ouroboros or something? I don't know, I can't remember. It might say in the book. Okay, so let's have a look now and see what the book has to tell us. So each tarot deck comes with its own little guidebook. They're all written by different people, so there's all kinds of different interpretations. And we'll have a look. We have to have a look for the one of Earth. Earth, here we go. So we've got Earth and we've got number one. So in the little guidebook, 
there is a let me pop it underneath the card there is a little representation of the card so you know you're reading about the right card but I'll put it there so that it's bigger for you I'm not going to read all of this I'll just read the first paragraph it says earth one depicts the universe of physical energy symbolized as the multiplicity of planets or atoms held within a container of energy in myths the ancients spoke of the Ouroboros, oh it is called an Ouroboros, or the python that was said to encircle the earth. Now for the meanings, it says the ability to manifest ideas into physical reality, abundance, physical well-being, sensuality, the love of material reality, seeing what is, sometimes indicates a need to be more grounded and rational. Okay. So for me now, I have to pick my reflection for the week and it says to focus on physical well-being. So that's interesting. And manifesting ideas into physical reality. Be more grounded and rational. So that makes me laugh a bit because in fact, I'm very rational. My... PhD was in philosophy, analytical philosophy. So rationality is something that I am capable of, but that doesn't mean that I find it always easy to use my reason to help me cope with emotions. So the need to be more grounded and rational, I think that is actually what I'm going to focus on for this week. So every time I'm feeling a difficult emotion or even a positive emotion, making sure that I take the time to think about how I'm feeling, acknowledge it, make sure that I don't let it sort of take over me or be inappropriate in any way. So using the reason that I'm quite capable of to keep myself grounded when I'm struggling. So I really like that message and I think that's really useful for me this week. So that's the message that I will be putting in my planner. But I'm also going to journal about this card in my tarot journal and I will share that with you shortly. So I've cleared myself some space and I've got my tarot journal out. At the moment I'm using an A6 Traveller's Notebook by Chic Sparrow in this lovely dark brown colour. It's got something on the back. <laughs> It's starting to scuff up and scratch now and get a little bit more rustic looking, which I enjoy. So I am currently using an A6 Stalogy for my tarot journaling. Although once this book's filled up, I'm very tempted to move into a B6 instead, simply because I'd like more room to decorate. <laughs> I do love journaling, obviously, that's why I have a journaling channel I love journaling I love decorating and this is actually not that big a space I'm enjoying it and it's quick and easy to do so I have to think about it but I may change to a b6 so the first thing that I will do is I put in a photograph of the card that I picked and I have printed that on a Polaroid zip sticker printer machine thing I'm just going to trim the top because the photo was like slightly, the card slightly smaller than the size of the, the paper. So I'm just trimming that off. And I do like to write the date, which I can't remember. <laughs> I, I know it's Saturday, so I'm going to write Saturday. Oops, I've gone off the top. Saturday. I'll leave a gap so I can look up the date. And it's May. Okay. Isn't it terrible when you can't remember what the date is? And then I will stick in my little sticker of my photograph. And you see that it actually takes up quite a lot of the space. And what I like to do then is write in the deck that I used, which was The Shimmering Veil by Silicon Way. I would like to decorate with some stickers because I just can't journal without a few stickers. So let's have a look. I quite like to emphasize that sort of circular nation of that cell or what to me looked like an embryo. Oh my God, oh, I've got some circle stickers. 
stickers here. Oh, I have some stickers here. This one looks to me like a tarot card and I'll zoom in. But can you see how the, <laughs> the sort of image shape on this sticker looks very like the sort of shape on the back of the deck of cards, which I also keep in a pouch. I don't think I showed the pouch, which has that same sort of, I don't know what you call that shape. It's like a um, burst of energy. <laughs> so I'm going to use that sticker. It looks like I've scratched a bit of it off, but never mind. And where would it fit? Oh, I want to put it there. That'll go over my date, but I can sort that out later, can't I? Or shall I not? Oh, maybe I'll put it. I'm going to put it. There. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Do I? I'll pop it down there. Okay. And I wanted some circle shapes, so I do have some circular stickers. Let's take one of those. My eyesight's terrible. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I think it's a tree, which goes with earth. The card was an earth card, so I think that my tree I will pop down here. And then there's, I've got some smaller circles which look a bit more abstract. Let's put some of those in as well. So you see it's really sort of simple decoration because I don't have very much space. Because if I put too much in here, I'm dropping stuff everywhere. I put too much in I won't be able to have any room to write will I so let me know do you think I should upgrade to a bigger a bigger journal I could put another circle there couldn't I what would be nice take that one with the blue in it so so simple just a photograph and a few stickers and then I like to write about my interpretation of the card. And then I will sort of write about what was in the guidebook and what my reflection topic is going to be. responded to the card very briefly some of the information from the guidebook I've put my personal sort of reflection goal for the week that I will transfer into my planner and then I've left myself a little space here for some more private journaling that I don't really want to share because <laughs> we don't always want to share everything do we so that's my little spread which is my response to the tarot card that I randomly picked. I hope you found that interesting in some way and perhaps it will inspire you to use journaling prompts to help you with self-reflection. Obviously it doesn't have to be tarot cards, you can use all kinds of different things to prompt journaling, but I do find them really fun to use and inspiring and sometimes freakly appropriate to what I'm going through. So thank you so much for watching, bye.